Hey there everyone, it's new here. I've decided to make a couple of very special videos having to do with the way I play the game on the back end. Uh, sort of ways that I make currency when I'm not actually mapping and some of the processes that take place uh, behind the scenes that nobody usually really talks about or concerns themselves with. Uh, one of them is, has been a requested video uh, having to do with Sentinels and how I'm rolling my Sentinels because if you've been watching any of my farming videos You will have seen that the Sentinels I run are pretty good pretty high quality uh, arguably in the neighborhood of Half an exalt to a full exalt in value. I'd say each Sentinel is worth at least half an exalt if I had to price point it By the way Sentinels can be pretty challenging to price <laughs> uh, And a lot of people don't really know how valuable they are uh, I've definitely ran some Sentinels that were probably worth at least 2x in some cases. Uh, I'd say one of them's right here. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Du -du 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 -du. I had one that was Expedition. Yeah, like this one, for example. So this uh, this is probably the best Sentinel I've ran here. Uh, on the previous 100 maps session, uh, it is uh, an Obsidian Pandemonium Sentinel, Tier 2 Currency, Tier 2 Expedition, Tier 2 Legion. And I was focusing on Legion on that one. I mean, this Sentinel's probably worth... It's easily worth at least 1x, uh, probably 2x or so. And I want to show you guys how I get my hands on sentinels like these and how I go about recombinating them uh, to keep them in good form. And how I basically do this without spending oodles of currency <laughs> in terms of investments. Because sentinel is incredibly lucrative, this league, as you all know. And... Even if we had to invest currency to run Sentinel, we would probably all do that because of how lucrative it is. But you can you definitely don't even have to because there's just tons and tons of Sentinels drop. Uh, I will talk about the Sentinel video in the next one. And apologies to those who are really anxious to see it drop. I'm, I'm going to drop these videos one day after the next. And I just wanted to uh, you know get, get a few of you anticipating uh, the Sentinel video coming out. But this video right here, the one we're going to start with, is about the gems gem leveling so um i have mentioned in previous videos that i like i, I take gem leveling very seriously um i think all last league i leveled regular enhanced supports of course we didn't have awakened enhanced support and the reason i chose enhanced supports is because uh, exceptional gems can be leveled super quickly uh, not just by qualitying them up to 20, but by also having a bow uh, that has plus quality to socketed support gems. And you can sort of supercharge the rate at which you level the gems and essentially make extra profit or more efficiently make profits. As long as you don't mind messing on the back end uh, with buying and selling gems like that. Also, it just so happens that uh, level three enhanced supports are the go-to gem for... Uh, destroying into a faceter's lens. Uh, you'll have to look up a faceter's lens if you don't know what that is, but it is a harvest uh, craft that uh, allows you to transplant experience from one gem to another, and a level 3 bricked corrupted enhanced support uh, is the lowest value, highest experience uh, gem that exists in the market so it is sort of the go-to for that and therefore uh it was ex it was exceptionally smart to level enhanced support because you couldn't lose even if you corrupt them and it doesn't go up to a level four uh you still you actually i actually even made money on the ones that bricked which is kind of crazy to think and then of course i made uh, multiple exalts uh, in the event that i had a success Full, uh, corruption now what is a successful corruption you have roughly a 16 percent chance each time you corrupt a gem uh, for it to go up a level and that makes it extremely valuable compared to what it is normally uh, if you corrupt the gem and it does not go up in value uh, it, it automatically loses a lot of value because it lost all of its potential even if it stays the same it still loses uh, some of its value with the possible exception of exactly this gem enhanced supports yeah, because of the faceter lens thing. So I wanted to get that out of the way. This league, uh, the stakes are much higher because there are awakened enhanced supports, such as the ones that I have in this belt. Uh, also, because of recombinators, we are, are able to uh, level these gems up faster than ever 
And some of you may not be aware, but for some reason, I, I, I have a feeling that Jiggy might have messed up some of the coding here because you know how long it takes to level a an enhanced support from one to two, right? It's pretty quick. And then from two to three is like really long. From three to four is also pretty quick. <laughs> I have no idea why for awaken enhanced supports or empower or enlightened support. But I swear to you, it's way fast. Like leveling the gem from three to four is way faster than from two to three. I, I forgot to check the, yeah, I don't think I can check, unfortunately, <laughs> the XP because I don't currently have one that's sitting at uh, level three. Uh, but look that up because it's, it's really strange. Uh, so it, it just doesn't take too long. And especially at leveling 220% increase experience rate, uh, it's super fast. Now you could be leveling uh, awakened gems and I do that sometimes on my offhand quiver, uh, but they level extremely slow, unless you're doing like simulacrum or insanely juice stuff constantly. Uh, they level pretty slowly. Uh, the, uh, the exceptional gems much more quick, and I prefer that because it allows me to make more currency more quickly uh, doing that. So uh, my gem of choice, this league, with the stakes being higher, is Awaken Enhanced Support. Now, at some point, if and when I'm floating tons of currency i might start uh dabbling in awakened empowers and enlightens in fact i'm sure at some point i will do awakened enlightens because i want to level a couple of them up to five myself but for now awakened enhanced uh supports are really good and i want to show you just how good they are so let's take a look down here i got a nice little sheet here uh starting down at this line right here i just got done running legions uh 100 maps and I was able to, to successfully level six awakened enhanced support gems from one to four twice, twice over. So I got 12 gems in total. Uh, I did the cemetery farm before that it was juicier with the deli mirror on each one. And I got, I think I got almost three full rounds uh, leveled. So that kind of give you an idea about how long it takes. You're looking at from level one to four, you're looking at somewhere around 30 to 40 maps of fairly juiced content. Uh, to, to get those all the way leveled up, in my opinion. And right now, it's kind of hard to say because the cost of these gems is fluctuating quite a bit, or it keeps going, I guess it keeps going up. Uh, we can see here, if I actually go into my tab, I'm uh, this is kind of a life search I have. Uh, well, you can see 20 days ago, these were going for like six and a half <laughs> X a piece. Uh, right now, it looks like Awaken Enhanced Support's going for around 10 or 11 X a piece. You can see here that the market is is really dry. I mean, there's just not much supply at all, and it's, it's adversely affecting the cost of these gems. But what happens then is in the event that you successfully level one up, we can see here that these are worth 49 to 50. I've been selling them for 50x a piece. So if you successfully corrupt this up to level 5, you're looking at a sale of around 50x currently. Now, a week ago, or two weeks ago, it was only 40x. And like a week before that, it was only about 30, 35x. Uh, so the prices, you know, the prices have been moving up in tangent. So they pretty well uh, kept, kept good pace. And if we see here what the failure price is, you can see that you're lucky to sell it for about 3x. And I've sold them for 3, 3.2x. And yeah, so... Uh, you know, people will buy the bricked Awaken Enhanced Supports, probably not for the Faceter's Lens, but they will buy them uh, to put them in their own gear, like I currently have right here. I have one right now that I'm using in there. So, uh, I just wanted to point that out, that you can see the bricked price is 3x. You can see that uh, with before it's even leveled, it's 10x. And there's one thing I didn't check. I didn't check a fully leveled, uncorrupted one. And I don't know. It, it, it's, it's almost impossible to price point these. I don't really think people are all that interested in buying uh, one pre-corrupted. You know, if somebody's... Maybe somebody out there is doing it. But there's just not enough on the market. Uh, enough in supply uh, to do that. So really, I think the only relevant numbers here are, are the beginning price, the bricked price, and then the successful uh, corruption level up price. And why am I going through all this? Well, I got to kind of show you guys how much profit I make each time I do that. So you can see that um, I, the 12 that I have right here, 
I actually paid on average of about 8x, 8 to 9x for these because I bought these like a week ago. Uh, but for the sake of this uh, video, we'll, we'll pretend that I paid uh, 10x for each one. So that's 120x. Yeah, that's 120x in costs, total cost for those gems. Uh, you can see that I have a line here that says successful profits 150x. So what does that mean? Well, in case you weren't aware, I did mention a second ago that you have a 16% success chance if you just simply Valorb uh, the, the gem. But if you're talking about corrupting something that is really high value, you don't want to do that. You want to actually double corrupt them in the temple. And you want to go into the, the temple that has a Doriana's Institute tier 3 and uh, lens corrupt it twice over because it actually almost doubles your chances. You go from around a 16% chance all the way up to a 30% chance. And you can see that if I corrupt 12 gems, double corrupt it, at a 30% chance, uh, 3.6 of them on average are going to go up to level 5. And that is where the 150x comes from, because that's three gems that went up to level five. Ah, yes, I actually rounded down in that, so that's being extra conservative. Um, th now, in case you're wondering why it's not double the chance, well, it's because the double corruption lens, the way it works is it actually corrupts the item two times back to back. So there's a chance that it corrupts it up to the level and then corrupts it back down the level and nothing happens. So that's why it's not 32%. It's actually just 30% success chance. Of course, that's extremely rare. You're only looking at like 2 or 3% chance that happens. So absolutely worth using double corruption uh, chambers. So we have to discuss the price of that as well, don't we? So let's go in and look at that real quick. Right here, I have all three, all three valuable rooms uh, to run. Let's take a look at Doriana's Institute first. And you'll see here that this room costs around 120 chaos to run. Okay. And you'll also notice I have a lot of uh, uniques over here because I'm planning to double corrupt them. Now, double corruption chamber, traditional dick chamber, is 150 chaos. So you can see that 120 plus 150 is going to be about 270 chaos, right? So uh, we w one would assume that if I buy this with both rooms, it's going to cost me like 1.5x, right? But no. It's only 1x, 1.1x. I even have a live search here, and these are Locus of Corruption and Doriana's Institutes um, periodically showing up for 1x apiece, and I pay 1x for each one of these. And in some cases, people will even sell three rooms all at once, and it's still 1, 1.1, 1 1.2x apiece. In that case, you know, a couple of my rooms did actually have all three. <laughs> And uh, so I went out of my way. I didn't really have to do this, but I went out of my way to get the uh, to go ahead and make um, this right here, the Mask of the Six Demon, because this item right here is worth 2.5. Or uh, honestly, I sell it for 2.9x. Uh, I'm patient about it. And this helmet costs 1.3, 1.4, and then this Val of Summoning costs less than half an X. And you can see pretty obviously there that I'm making somewhere between half an X and a full X. Uh, each time I use that room. Now, I'm not going to go out of my way to go into that room just to do that. You can. I mean, that is a way to make profit. Uh, but it, I, it's not definitely not one of the better ways um, to do it, especially this league when there's just so <laughs> so many ways to make uh, in currency this league. Uh, but if you're already in there, if you're already going into the temple and, and it just happens to spawn that room, might as well. You might as well grab the materials, go in there, make it's, you're being efficient with your time. And that's some, one thing I do. I like to be uh, as efficient with my time as I can. Uh, I've talked about this before. I have a full-time job. I'm not playing all day every day. So um, one of the things I actually care about doing is being efficient. I know that can sometimes be a hot take on the game. You know, why are you playing a game if you're so concerned about being efficient with currency per hour? And the truth is I probably wouldn't be all that concerned about it if I was a no-lifer and I just was able to play the game all day i'd be way more ironically i'd be way more casual and relaxed about it <laughs> but because i i don't have unlimited time to play the time that i do sit down and actually get to business so to speak i want to be very uh smart with my time i suspect that's actually pretty relatable to a lot of you uh on here uh so uh, that's kind of what my setup looks like. So if I ran a hundred maps, uh, this is what it looks like on the back end, what I'm going to do. And honestly, guys, this is pretty fun, actually. I don't like just running maps 
for the sake of running maps, earning currency, that I don't like doing that 100% of the time. I like playing, d diversifying the way I play the game a little bit, and especially if it's lucrative and a good way to do it, this is fun. And, and double corrupting is a form of gambling in this game. It's a good thing to do. You can see here I have 12 Aegis Auras. I'm not using Aegis Aura, and for a, a good time, what I was doing is because uh, there was such a huge discount for taking both types of corruption rooms at once, I was double corrupting these boots. Now these boots right here I actually bought <laughs> for 25x, but uh, I was trying to hopefully get a 10% increase movement speed plus another useful uh, double corruption on these boots uh, for myself. And look, I mean, I, I hit one like this. I've already sold one of these that had similar rolls to this for like 25x. I have another one in here. Th this will actually very likely sell at 20 to 30x, uh, this kind of double corruption. Uh, we have some that are worth a little less, like this, who still sell for 3 or 4x. And even when nothing happens, and you get something like this, this still sells for over half an x. In which case, I kind of make my money back in, to a certain extent. So there are certain ways to be intelligent, and you, and you kind of want to go on PoE Ninja and see what uniques are valuable. Personally, I like taking the approach of, I like crafting my own gear if I can, and then as a backup, you know, if it hits a mod that's good but not for me, I'll try to sell it. There's certainly a balance to be made on that. It's not always the wisest thing to do in terms of that. Like, I wouldn't, like, I would not recommend double corrupting worm sign gloves <laughs> to hit the double corruption you want. Uh, I would recommend just buying that one because the item is too cheap. But in certain cases, it is, it is worth doing, and it's such a popular item. Uh, to me, the sort of, the really good range of value for double corrupting items where it's not crazy expensive to do but it's also the items not so cheap that it isn't worth doing i like the 1x range so uniques that are worth around one exalt are, feel really good uh to tie, try and like double corrupt for profit or double like even a void battery would be a decent thing to double corrupt. i mean it wouldn't be a terrible idea uh to double corrupt but agus auras are one of the most popular uniques this league and this is actually gonna be my first time uh double corrupting these I am finally, I'm making a switch from boots to the shield because I now have my ultimate in-game pair of boots, I think. So I went on PoE Ninja and I went to see, you know, what what is a good 1x-ish unique that is extraordinarily popular. And then I, I'll, I found, you know, I found out pretty quickly it's Aegis Aura that's basically the one. Uh, surprisingly, these boots are actually pretty popular too. And these boots are worth about 1x when they have a 20% quantity roll, by the way. Back to Aegis or I went ahead and checked some of the double corruption, and yeah, there's, there are some corruptions on there, single corruptions that are worth like 5 to 10x for the shield, and there's certainly going to be some double corruptions that are worth 50 to 100x if I possibly hit it. So it's not a bad idea, really not a bad idea. In fact, I went out of my way to actually divine some of these up. And I probably spend on average about half an exalt in divine orbs on each of these. I made sure they divined up pretty good. I even went out of my way to buy ones that had a baseline armor value of at least like 70 or 80 percent. So these are all pretty decently rolled Aegis Auras. They're all around 1200 armor as a baseline. And you know if, if these brick into three white sockets they're, they're still going to be sellable certainly. Uh, but if I may come out way ahead on this and I'm getting to double crep them nearly for free. That's kind of one way to look at it. You know I'm one way to look at it is I'm paying 1x to double corrupt the gems and then I'm paying nothing to double corrupt something else. Or I'm paying 1x to double corrupt all these shields and I'm getting to double corrupt the gems for free. You know, you look at it however you want. Uh, the point, you know, it's all going to the same bank, so I mean, that's it. So let's get into the fun part of this and we're actually going to run these maps. So we'll start with uh, these two here, get these out of the way. And it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna open these all, these uh, these two right here have all three major rooms. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna double corrupt uh, the shield, we're gonna double corrupt the awakened enhanced support and we're going to level up the, the mask. Now, I, I could cut this video, I guess, you know, to the point, I, honestly, I, 
I run fast enough, I don't think it's gonna be worth it. You know, you guys can just sit here and wait for me to run to the rooms. <laughs> Honestly. Uh... Forgot for a second what button I needed to press. I got Wealth of the Val over here. You know, early in the league, I would also actually search for that room. It's a good room too, but I'm not gonna mess with it here. So we're already at the Locus of Corruption here. This is gonna be the double corruption on the shield. And let's see what I get. Okay, pooped. That's fine. Gonna happen. <laughs> Gonna happen a lot, probably. And so that's that's about. I mean, essentially, that's like two X going down the drain uh, when it completely poops. So yeah, I mean, it, it's costing me essentially like two X each time I do that. This is essentially half an X or a full X, uh, almost a full X for free. Uh, getting that there, and then we're gonna go up to this room. where I was going. So these are the ones that really count. The ones I care about a lot. This is the difference between 3x and 50x, depending on what happens here. Nothing happens, so it's 3x. 30% chance of success. My mana is gone. Alright, so we will uh, put that back here. Shield's already gone. And we'll put that there, and we'll run the second map. So, a very unsuccessful first map. No big deal. I think you guys would be surprised at how much profit I make from this doing. We'll kind of try and figure out at the end, at the end of this video about how much uh, profit I make. It's gonna be a little bit hard to calculate, but uh, I think we can get kind of ballpark it pretty well. Okay, we got the, the boring room to get out of the way. This is the last time I'm gonna be messing with this here. It's not even on my loot filter, apparently. <laughs> okay. We've got the shield over here. Okay, bricked out into nothing, basically. Oh, I don't want to go in there. I don't want to mess with that. <laughs> I hate that room, time consuming. Although each time I go in there, I get that uh, I get the boots that are worth a lot of currency. <laughs> kind of funny. Okay, here we go. Are we in the right? No. No, I'm going all kinds of wrong way. Oh, well, it is a maze. Okay, so here we go. 33 or 50, and the answer is... Okay, so that actually double crept down both ways. <laughs> uh, down is not that big of a deal. I mean, I'll just re-level it again. I, I mentioned before, leveling from 3 to 4 is not even that big of a deal. So, uh, we got losses. On both ends, right away. That's quite all right. Let's see if we can turn it around. See, I got, uh, yeah, I'll just do this, I guess. Oh, this makes sense. Perfect. Looks like we're going left. Last time I did, uh, I did 12 gems at once. I got four of them to go up, and one went down, and four went up, and I just made huge profits on that. Um, and, and that's a common result because 3.6 of my gems, on average, are going to go up. So it's actually exactly within the normal range. There we go. Wow, poof again. These poor Aegisauras are just disappearing. Well. Yeah, 
Sense to two. Boom. Oh my goodness. Nothing again. Another loss. So it's costing me like 7x each time that happens. Hole. So I'm now in the hole 21x there. And I think uh, I'm in the hole somewhere around almost 30x after three maps, actually. So I, I, get, I can do the calculation in my head, actually, right now. So it costs me 7 there. And then this basically costs me about 2 uh, for each one of these. Two. And then the price of, of the, uh, the the Chronicle as well. So it, it cost me about 10x for, for each one of these, actually. Yeah, it's roughly it's a little bit less, but it's roughly 10x uh, of an investment for each one. So I'm down 30 right now. So this will be 40x. And, you know, if this one goes up, I'll be ahead by 10x. And that, that's, e that's even if I poof the shield again. Always seem to, to enter the locus of corruption room first. Right, let's see if we can get a little bit of luckier here with the shield. No, still bad result again. The shield it has a much lower success rate, of course. You know, it's only a 25% chance that it even successfully double corrupts. Okay, here we go. Whoop. Another nothing. I'm not up to that just yet. Well. Wow. If this keeps up, uh, this video will be rather unfortunate. <laughs> but uh, there you go. Don't now down 40x. I could have just double corrupted uh, an omniscience and failed, I guess. And it would be the same thing, right? I'm not playing on I'm not playing on those terms yet. I'm not double crafting omniscience yet. At some point maybe. Mm, okay. Yeah, I'm really not concerned about these gloves. What? I hate this room. Made it. All right. Okay, really hoping this one goes up because I don't got a lot to show for myself. But fortunately, not again. Over five on that. That's very bad luck considering I have a 30% chance of success each time. I finally didn't lose my Aegisaur. But let's see what this is worth. Um, a bricked one of these that, that's rolled well. It's still going to be worth a lot. This is worth at least 1x. Yeah, I mean, I think I will call these worth 1x. I think it's fair. So a bricked Aegis or a well-rolled bricked Aegis or is still going to be worth 1x. So it would seem... Well, what comes around goes around, or what goes around comes around, and I'm, you know, I'm not fully expecting to see a turnaround here, but I'm, I'm kind of expecting. Not on the Aegis Road. I wouldn't be surprised if I make absolutely no profit on those shields. Uh, we'll see. Okay, there's another one that bricked into nothing again. Just 
I went up on the uh, quality. Really bad luck. That does nothing for this gem. So I'm in the hole 60x and I've got, I guess you could say, 3x back to show for it. So 57, down 57 actually. Can't read. Wait, what? Okay. Oh, I'm so confused. Always this room first. I finally hit a, a corruption. Actually, I know for a fact the fizz taken as extra elemental damage is a very good corruption for this uh, shield. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily best, but it's a good one. Uh, we'll check in a moment. Uh, what, I, I don't think it's a high roll, though. Warcry gem. I don't think. Pretty sure. Finally did get a successful double corruption there and oh wow I have the exact same chance to go down as I do to go up so I've seen out of seven gems I've seen two down zero up and the chances are I'd see two down two up actually in seven gems but uh, yeah very very bad luck so far uh, we'll just kind of have to hope now, I should get, on average, at least three up in 12 gems. So. I don't know what to say. Let's see what this is worth. First of all, uh, Socket of Warcry gems. Yeah, worth nothing. Or actually, maybe it's worth 2x. I don't know. Okay, let's say uh, this one here. All right, this is uh, 7. So, I, I'm thinking this is... Well, I don't know. This Apparently, it's not showing up. Actually, this is this is actually my worst shield too. This this is the only shield that was like kind of low on the roll. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think this is probably worth at least like two or three x. We'll say it's two x right now, just because of what I saw there. Well, we're now on the down slope. Spent 70x. of corruption first every time. Oh. Kinda need those shields in my inventory though. Whoops. Alright, they're all ready to go all around 1200. <coughs> the first one I think this is my highest armor one at 12 1240 something. A little desperate here. Fail again. Hello. Hmm. 
Yo, what's up? Apparently, I'm burning money right now. I, I am attempting to make a video that showcases how I earn a bunch of extra currency on the back end. And I'm doing it by burning money instead. Because my RNG... I do seem to have streamer RNG, but only when I'm not streaming. When I'm offline. For the most part. My crazy RNG takes money. Alright, here we go. Hey! There, finally. It's not even enough to put a smile on my face because I've had it coming. Like, by a lot. Okay, so. Um, still way down. Still down like 50x, actually. Uh, but at least. Finally hit one. Let's see what I get here. Another poop. My mana is gone. I'm not. Well, if nothing else, it's be a cautionary tale. For anyone who's thinking about gambling in this way. In the long run, it turned out pretty well, but uh, you can definitely get burned pretty hard in the short run. I don't exactly double corrupt my headhunter the moment I have enough cash to do so. You know, I'll put it to you that way. Okay, here we go. Get two in a row? No, down three. Well... Down three is the same odds as up three, so... Just one of those things. Oh, what a terrible layout this is. Gotta backtrack all the way back here with the stupid spikes. Wait, what? And I gotta go this way? <laughs> Screen scared you. Alright, here we go. Aegisaur. Going again. Oh my god, I poofed like six of them. Man. I've had absolutely horrendous results on this. Uh, I think I poofed five and then brick three and then. Poofed four, bricked three, two, nothing happened, and one actually successful double credit. <laughs> What is that? What are those odds, man? It's wild. So bad. <laughs> well. This, this does put a smile on my face, so what this did is it went down really hard on the quality, but went up on the level, so it's all good. So, getting only 2 out of 12, which is still pretty terrible odds, uh, at least that makes it so I'm not, like, massively in the hole. I'm gonna come out okay on this. Uh, maybe pretty close to even, honestly, uh, even if everything else just gets bricked and bad as possible. Oh, a legion. Oh, I wouldn't want to click it. <laughs> Not worth doing. Uh, okay. Oh my god. Getting lost. 
These are some awful rooms. Wow. <laughs> Hypothetically, Aegisaur should be an excellent candidate for double corruption because uh, it, it, it's... It's a super popular unique that does have some valuable uh, corruptions. Not extremely valuable, I guess. But it, by default, it has no implicit. Uh, so you're not, like, ruining an implicit uh, by overriding something bad. So it can only gain a lot of power. Uh, so it should, theoretically. The only reason it wouldn't be great is if shield corruptions really are kind of trash. And, I mean... I don't think that's the case, but... Uh, should be alright. Question, Cemetery Strat worse than Dunes? No, uh, I think Cemetery is better than Dunes overall. But it's more complex. There's more variables in play. So we're in our very last map here. And if the, and if I uh, if I successfully double corrupt the Aegis or into something valuable and I get the rank 5 gem, I'll actually come out pretty good in this entire session. That's a steep... That, that's a, a tall order, but... Eh, we'll... We'll see if, it, if I can pull it off. I sure as hell deserve for a successful double corruption here because I only have one out of 11. All right, let's see what we get. Oh, wow. So, miserably awful RNG with the Aegisaur. I mean, that, that's just how it goes sometimes. There's certainly going to be some combinations that come out to be worth uh, a huge amount of Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Wow, another awful room set up. Actually, this isn't that bad. I just got lost. Okay, over here. All right, last chance to uh, probably actually actually come out ahead, or at least a little bit. Here we go. <laughs> Four down, two up. Uh, yeah, Chevrons would be a good one to double corrupt as well. That's a good point. Chevrons is, is good to double corrupt. Okay, so uh, I definitely had really awful RNG here. Uh, just to give you an idea, let, let's just take for 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 example in a vacuum. Uh, these are the kind of results you're looking at with um, just the enhanced supports. By the way, uh, the total cost uh, at a price point of currently 10x an enhanced support to level. Um, on average, you're going to get at least 3, 3.6 uh, to go up to level 5. Even if I round that down, that each of those are worth about 50x. So that's 150x there. So you're already 30x profit. <laughs> you're already 30x profit. Uh, you still get profits off of the bricked ones at a rate of 3, around 3x. Uh, per so that's a nine so that would be three successful three up and nine that don't go up so nine times three x is 27 x giving a grand total average total profits of around 177 x again a little higher than that actually because it's 3.6 i rounded down average net profit of 57 x Probably closer to around 60x. Uh, I, I would say, yeah, definitely around 60 exalts. Uh, even at 10, a whopping 10x apiece. Uh, still, for, for 12 of these gems, still looking around uh, 10 or 60x. Uh, I did actually forget to, to mention that uh, you would have to uh, discount the Chronicles. Okay. No, they're actually less than 1x. So it, it would cost you about 10x in Chronicles uh, if you were to do it that way. So still looking at profit of about 50x in 12 gems. And that's that's like 60 to 70 to 80, 60 to 80 maps. Uh, an additional 60x profit. I don't calculate the gems with that much profit, uh, even though that is actually how much profit I make on the back end on average uh, for this showcasing. <laughs> Typical story, bad RNG while streaming. And I came out behind. So how much uh, did I come out behind? Well, if we price point these two here at 1x a piece and this one at 2x, that's 4x there. And this is uh, 100x here. This is 104 exalt. It's actually 105 exalt, counting these two I put here. Uh, I have a 
a sort of refund profit of 105x. Uh, but it cost me a total of 120x to run this little experiment. So I came out down 15x with this particular one. I had really bad RNG, like really bad RNG. Uh, it could have been worse, obviously. I could have had like zero up. Uh, that would be horrendous. Um, but it was really bad RNG, and I came down only a little bit down. Uh, if I had not even messed with the shield, that would it would have been even less. It probably would have been about even, honestly. Uh, but I don't regret messing with the shields, uh, because, I mean, let's just go in here for a second and see. Question in the chat, how do you breed your sentinels? Well, I, I just mentioned in the beginning of this video, I'm going to... I'm going to show you guys on that uh, next here. Uh, and I'm going to do that actually uh, live on the stream, but I'm going to post a video tomorrow. So if you're watching live, congratulations. You get to see it here coming up in a few minutes. Right before I close this first part of the video I out here, I just want to check. I'm kind of curious. Uh, let's see here. Armor. Let's see. Armor 1200. So this is a decent armor roll. I mean, you can see that, like, even even bad corruptions, it's still worth a lot. So let's see what some of the really good ones are. So double fizz taken as extra element, or fizz taken as chaos, maybe, is it looks to be pretty good. Uh, reduce damage from critical strikes, maybe. Fizz damage taken as chaos looks like it might be actually really good, because I think you're immune to chaos damage uh, if you run this build, maybe. Uh, increased chance to block... It's also going to be pretty good. Yeah, it definitely looks like uh, Fizz taking his extra chaos is, is a premium hit. Um, and percent block is also pretty decent. Double socketed, you know, gems up or whatever is going to be pretty good. So you can see that I certainly had a decent chance of, of hitting something really good. Uh, it just didn't happen. It's unfortunate, but it's whatever. Um, I will give it a, another go on the next set, I suppose. Anyway, that concludes this portion of the video. This is basically exactly how I run the back end after I do a 100 map session. I stream it or I don't stream it. Uh, I have like 12 gems set up. I go ahead and pick or choose or select whatever unique I wish to double corrupt. I get a major discount on the Chronicles for doing that. And I usually come out way ahead. <laughs> this time I didn't. And that happens. I'm not going to not post a video because I didn't. Uh, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Um, so yeah, thanks for checking out this portion of the video out. And if you're watching this now, you can see the one about sentinel breeding uh, either right now or you're going to have to wait up to a day to see it.